they work with them or could even be one of them. To find out what really drives performance is author of Do We Need To Be Right All The Time, Hamish Thompson. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks. Do we need to be right all the time? I mean, it's, it's so great. <laughs> it's a great title. Do we need to be? And why do people think that we need to be driving this? It's an interesting title, isn't it? But I think the funny element is I've been doing this for around 30 years in regard to corporate gigs, sort of dozen years within a CEO. The lockdown period, I think I've actually heard this from my partner and my kids, Dad, Hamish, stop needing to be right all the time. So it's definitely, it's a corporate sense, but it's equally, I think, prevalent within business. And I think, uh, Jamie, the, the key aspect is when you start off your leadership journey, I'm giving my sort of my own experience, I always wanted to be right. Every debate, discussion, dialogue that you had, it was intellectual sparring. And it was enjoyable and I did okay from it. When you sort of self-reflect, you realise it's incredibly limiting uh, your thought diversity, sort of convergent views and things. You sort of block that off, which is a terrible thing for a leader. You don't actually allow a depth of relationships that you can have with trust. And in my experience, relationship stage two and three is what leads to breakthrough and transformation. And then about sort of unlocking potential within your team. If you're always right, nobody challenges you and it will lead to actually inertia. They'll have an input, but they'll actually lose every time. So reflection wise, incredibly important. Step back, show humility, compromise, concession, give freedom and autonomy, but it is a tough concept to get. It certainly is, but if we were all right at the same time, life would be a little bit boring as well. We've got to have a curious mind, don't we? How important is it to, to be open to other, others' opinions? I think having that uh, element, and I term it about insatiable curiosity, and I had a boss within uh, Asia Pacific, and he said, your mind works like a parachute best when open. And I think of starting with a viewpoint on every basis you have, that other people's opinions are actually they're valuable and they don't need to be silenced, even if you think they're different, but having that curiosity mindset. And it is something even the way that I actually recruit into businesses now is a concept called C plus W is greater than E. Curiosity and willingness is greater than experience. So even if you lack that functional experience or technical know-how, as long as you're curious and you're open to new concepts, um, it's a hallmark, I think, of exceptional companies, but also exceptional leaders as well. Great analogy. And uh, you've had well over 30 years experience in senior international leadership roles. What are some of the standout issues that could be worked on and how easy are they to fix? I think on that, probably COVID's uh, accelerated a lot of that. And a lot of people talk around coming out of COVID, that it's business as normal. And it's almost the gasp of relief that we get back to it. The great companies, I think, are those who will continually reinvent themselves. So use coming out of COVID in particular as a transformation opportunity. So there's probably sort of three key ones. Purpose is growing even more in importance from employees wanting to actually join an organisation, that people are starting now to actually talk and actually walk in regard to their wallets to, put up to performance. Um, there's a great saying that says performance without purpose is meaningless, but purpose without performance is impossible. So purpose-led companies now are really important. The second element, I think connectivity, you can't go alone if you're looking for that breakthrough element. No matter how gifted you are, you have to be an integrator and connector of others. And I think that's very key. And then probably the last one, I think the best companies are those who are constantly dissatisfied. They're always looking for new ideas, new methodologies. And that goes back to your point around being incredibly curious within that. And that's the fun element about leadership, finding ideas that are actually way better than your own. And getting back to your book title, it's not always right to be right. What about the flip side, Hamish, the, the person that usually takes one for the team or perhaps says sorry too much? Yeah, it's a dangerous element, isn't it? I think reflection is always good. And um, I think the cultures where you embrace risk-taking and boldness and you celebrate failure is right, providing you look for context within the insight. And if you get that context and insight, you can actually develop and go further forward. The one danger around self-reflection is if you ruminate, and that's around negative sort of thoughts around what could have been in the past, et cetera. And that's actually psychologically is a very dangerous situation. So it's good to be a self-reflector, 
definitely show humility and vulnerability and being open because it'll develop your trust relationship as long as you use the insight to take action. There's nothing worse that good leaders, good companies despise is inertia following an insight. Mm, got to just move on, hey. And, and how hard is it, Hamish, to transition from perhaps years of the same thinking and belief systems to, to you know, moving on and, and changing those belief systems? It is tough, actually, and it's, um, you have to actually learn to unlearn learnings in the past, if that makes sense. And we're trained in regard to a certain way. But again, on that, if you are curious and you're actually open to new ideas and perspectives, I think that's the fun element around it. But again, if you are a results-oriented person, you're very driven within that, you start to realise that learning new things, taking new directions, instead of going the typical right, you're going left, that does create breakthrough results. And importantly, breakthrough relationships because you're not silencing the other person. Um, it sounds easy. It's actually an incredibly difficult process with set sort of models and frameworks you, know, you need to follow. Um, but to me, it's the best type of leader, but equally the best type of person who's open to that additional input. Yeah, it sounds like great rewards once you do do that. And finally, Hamish, in your book, It's Not Always Right to Be Right, includes stories, tools and, and commentary from 17 leading international business experts. Can you give us a snippet on what we can expect in the book? Well, some people would actually say I'm probably quite lazy because I've got other people to help contribute within the book. I sort of look at it as though maybe there's a lazy element on it, but I love people who challenge my way of thinking. So you've got different people in regard to diplomacy, key CEOs, multinationals, consultants, etc., and they challenge my concepts, they build on the concepts, and it's a great thought process to start generating. And I'm sure some of my views, which I'm probably the typical egocentric sort of CEO and very dogmatic in my views. But the good thing is I know my views will change over time. So I'm very grateful to those uh, contributing authors. Uh, I think it just adds a whole new dimension to uh, otherwise what uh, is a good book, but uh, hopefully a better book. Well, it sounds like a great book and we love the title. It's not always right to be right. Hamish Thompson, thank you so much for your time today. Lovely connect.